extra. Recent research at the Mayo Clinic finds doing art at the bedside decreases patient anxiety and pain. KIMT News 3's Isabella Basco has more on how imagination can help alleviate discomfort. Imagine using creativity to cope with any illness, problem, or stress in everyday life. That's what one physician at the Mayo Clinic is recommending. But I usually try to make an art piece for the patient. Jenna has a unique job. Even mixing that with white if you want like a really bright kind of white red color would be neat. She uses art to distract patients from any pain they might feel while getting treatment at Mayo Clinic. Well, you are very special. Jenna is painting a tree today because it has special significance to her patient. Bringing the program in and just kind of bringing some light and fun into the situation, um, I think it does distract patients and I also think it, thinks it gives them something to look forward to as well. Um, and then in the end, you know, they can take all of their emotions and feelings and, you know, project it onto a piece of artwork. And her work is one example of a study by Mayo Clinic physicians emphasizing the importance of bringing art to the patient setting. One of the researchers is Dr. Alexandra Wolanski Spinner. She tells me a survey they conducted with the patients excites her. One quote that really inspires me uh, the most, probably uh, among the many quotes, which was, Yes, I am a person. And so it takes them out of what they're experiencing the pain, the anxiety, sort of that fight or flight area of their brain. Dr. Wolanski Spinner is a musician. She encourages everyone to find a creative outlet to release their energy. I guarantee you, you're going to feel better after you do it. Even if it's not Picasso, Jenna says it can help you deal with anything you might be going through. I think taking time for yourself to create something from within yourself is, is key. Well, Mayo Clinic is hoping to expand their menu of creative offerings at the bedside. A new study is finding more people are needing prescription lenses for nearsightedness, and it could be because of screen time. According to the National Institute of Health, 25% of Americans were nearsighted in 1971. Now that is up to almost 42%. Dr. Seth Silber is an ophthalmologist with Hennepin Healthcare in central Minnesota and says a large portion of nearsightedness is due to genetics, but that can't account for the dramatic rise in nearsightedness across the world. We're spending much more time these days uh, viewing objects that are very close to us. A study from the British Journal of Ophthalmology finds that increased use of phones and tablets could make children more likely to be nearsighted. Most students get to do projects in art class, but it will show you how one school is taking it to the next level. And a woman who served in not one or two, but three wars is being honored. That story's next.